Hello, hello. Welcome to a new video of uh, IT best practice. So um, we've been covering Meraki Wi-Fi for some time, and uh, we're going to continue on that topic um, a little bit longer. Uh, we create these videos for internal purposes, so technicians and engineers can use these videos as a reference point internally. And we figure that we can also share these videos with the public because Many people want to learn more about Meraki Wi-Fi. You know, Meraki is an excellent solution. It has its place in the enterprise and in the small businesses. And they have a lot of settings that unless you know Meraki already, you have to get used to learning the new ways of doing things and the new configuration. So um, there is an interesting setting not, not too many people use it um, we like using it depending on the configuration we're deploying and it's called um, the allow connections only if they obtain an IP address from the DHCP server so let's go there um, the way to get there you would go to wireless uh, you go to the SSIDs and you edit any of your SSIDs you uh, you would like to work with and that's going to take you to the access control page, as you can see here, of the SSIDs. Um, just a quick side note, you can change this, the SSIDs from um, this drop-down menu, or you could have gone directly from wireless access control. Anyway, so if you go down to the configuration page of the SSID, you see an option that says mandatory DHCP. And the option for that is enable mandatory DHCP. That means that it's enable or disable mandatory DHCP. So what it means is that when you have client computers connecting to the Wi-Fi network, in this case, the specific Wi-Fi network we're dealing with, this SSID, if you enable this option, the client computers must receive an IP address from the DHCP server that is serving that specific um, SSID. Otherwise, the connections is not going to be able to function, meaning if someone has hard-coded an IP address on the IP settings of that client computer or device, and this option is enabled, that client device not going to be able to fully access the network. Uh, so let's go over that real quick and I'm going to show you the examples and how it works. As you could see, this is an on and on, on and on switch. So there's not much configuration here for you to do, but uh, we're going to have it enabled, right? So we're going to have it enabled and um, what we're going to do now is that I'm going to have, I'm going to show you that I have a client computer. This is a, uh, um, a laptop that, that is hardwired to my network. And I'm going to show you this, uh, how the mandatory DHCP setting works and how it, it works on the system. So as you could see here on the uh, Wi-Fi interface of my laptop, I have manually configured the um, IP settings for that SSID, right? I have that on, uh, if I came here, you're going to see that I'm using VLAN 80. And of course, I know the IP settings for the network, um, but that's besides the point. So I have 172.16.80.55, uh, blah, blah, blah. I have my subnet and my default gateway, and um, it is configured. So if I try to connect to this SSID 5Y that has this setting enabled, I should not be able to connect to the network, right? So let's go over that. But in the meantime, we're going to do two things so I can show you something else. I'm going to do some packet capture on the Meraki side, and then we're going to see what's happening in the background when a client device that is using a uh, hard-coded IP address attempts to connect to an to an SSID that has mandatory DHCP enabled. So before I connect from my 
uh, laptop device, I'm going to enable the or prepare the capture for this. Uh, for that, you would go to, I have it enabled here already, but you could have gone to network wide and packet capture. And this case, uh, we're going to do a packet capture of my um, from my access point. So I'm going to make sure that I select access points and I have only one access point in my test environment but if you are doing this in your production and you have multiple access points you're gonna have the options there and then you have the um, the, uh, the the captures uh, syntax right here that you could use I believe this is based on TCP dump uh, so but I'm gonna use a simple syntax right here I'm gonna use either host and I'm gonna I'm gonna use the um, MAC address of my laptop device this is the uh, wireless interface and I'm gonna start this capture and then I'm gonna attempt to connect to the Wi-Fi network all right so I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do this capture for about 60 seconds that'll be enough for me to, uh, to connect so I'm gonna do capture then I'm gonna come here I'm gonna connect to my Wi-Fi network uh, where did it go okay where did my network go let me uh, disable re-enable this final test and here it is I'm gonna do connect I'm gonna enter my password And as you could see, uh, it's taking a little longer than usual uh, to connect. So uh, let's just give it a couple of seconds uh, until it times out. In the meantime, the capture <laughs> it got stopped. So let me start it again. So it's going to be two captures instead of one. Okay, so I was able to connect, as you can see, but I have no internet, right? So I was able to authenticate and I was able to associate to the SSID, but I have no network access. So let me open up the first capture that I had, um, that I created before, and we're going to go over... Uh, the settings so here it is so let's see if we find uh, what was happening to uh, the Wi-Fi connections uh, I'm gonna ignore all this these are just probe requests and probe responses over channel 44 or not even channel 44 that the access points was seen so I'm gonna see a lot of uh, all the SSIDs around me but I'm looking for something specific Right, and I'm going to come down here and then we're going to take it from there. So this is just broadcast, broadcast right here. So I am authenticated, as you can see here, like my client device authenticated to. This is a management frame and it authenticated radio information. So it authenticated to this BSSID. This is the BSSID of my SSID. And then I associate it right here, right? So I am authenticated, I am associated, and as you can see down here, you're gonna see the um, wireless handshake that was successful. So my client device successfully connected to the Wi-Fi network, but because of this setting that I have configured on my SSID, enable mandatory DHCP, even though I am successfully authenticated and associated to the network, I do not have network access because 
uh, Meraki sees that this client device is using static IP address on its configuration. So it's going to block the traffic to the to the network. As, as you can see here, uh, you know, like I've never, uh, you can see how Meraki is looking for, uh, well, this is it. This is Meraki doing ARP, ARP request. This is the IP address that I have configured on the client, 172.16.80.55. And I just asking now that it's going through the whole either in the process of saying, hey, you know what, who has this MAC address, who has this MAC address, and then devices on the network are going to reply. And then after that, it's, going, it's joining the broadcast and the multicast multi groups, but it still it does not have full network access, right? So it's coming right here. It's gonna, it wants to make sure that it obtains the... Um, the IP address is doing the multicast uh, things. As you could see here, another um, art request is looking for the um, for the default gateway, right? And this is the part that Meraki is not responding. When it's searching for that default gateway, it's never going to find the, IP, the MAC address to that default gateway because of, again, of these settings. So how can you see that? So let me show you something down here on my laptop. So if I came, this is something that I was doing before, CLS, if I do an R minus A, you're going to see that on my 172.16.80.55 uh, interface, right? The IP address that I'm using for my wife, for my Wi-Fi interface, there's no, uh, DHCP entry here, as you could see, like if I went to my 172.16.5.109, which is my um, Ethernet address, you could see it right here, my um, uh, my default gateway entry that came from the DHCP server. So as you could see, the uh, that entry is never successfully added or found here in the ARP table for the for that specific segment that I'm working on. And um, you may be thinking, what about if I add that ARP entry manually in, in the configuration, will it work? Will it work? Uh, the answer to that question is it will not work, right? Uh, it, it'll show up as a static entry. And as of now, I am not 100% sure what, what bits Meraki uh, searches to identify if, if an IP address is coming from, from, from one source or the other, uh, but it wouldn't work. What I believe will work, though, and I will try this later, and I maybe I'll create a video of this, is if you spoof the... Uh, an address from another connection. Uh, I, I have a feeling that that will happen if you spoof that IP address you're going to be able to connect or if you create some type of man in the middle uh, uh, configuration or maybe if I add another uh, Wi-Fi card to my laptop and, and I create an IP, and I create a DHCP server coming from the other um, DHCP server and I, and I um, and I and I spoof the MAC address and that's gonna show on my um, on my ARP table. I believe that will do it. I mean that's something that I will have to test. But anyway, so that's a pretty cool setting. Many people use uh, mandatory DHCP as a security options for for Wi-Fi networks. You know, like is is like another layer of security. But I would advise you uh, against that in large environments, uh, at least without properly testing this configuration. Uh, this setting has many issues or could potentially have many issues during the roaming process. So if a roaming between uh, access points in the same SSIDs as you, as you go from one access point to, to the other, that's going to be a different uh, BSSID or if we're going from one VLAN to the other or depending on the type of 
um, I, I addressing that you have if you have layer three roaming. So w when you start enabling this setting in large configurations, I, I would have, you know, like advise you to do proper testing and due diligence before you deploy this in, in production. Uh, because, you know, as you transition from one IP to the other, the system is going to say, oh, you already have a, an IP address on your system. And when you try to associate to the next access point, even though it is the same SSID, you may get denied access until you get an IP refreshment, right? Like the IP address refreshes from the DHCP. You can either disable and re-enable your interface card or disconnect and reconnect but that defeats the whole purpose of roaming. So um, if you have a flat in network or if, if all your uh, configurations is in a small flat network, I mean, th this would be simple to do, like it's a nice setting to implement. Uh, but again, I wouldn't call this like, you know, a strong security measure, but it is one of the um, different uh, bricks that you would use on your security uh, configuration, right? As you're building that security wall, you you would implement different bricks to make your network secure, and this has its place in it. So um, that's it for this video. I hope that you find this useful and you have a much better idea of whether you would like to implement this or not on your configuration. Have a good day.